Chapter Three, Meet Paco. One day, a nasty hurricane roared up the east coast, bringing with it a very tired, very wet pelican. One minute he was happily feasting on fanciful fish in Puerto Rico, and the next he was lying on a beach in Gloucester. The poor little guy was found soaked and confused by Professor Galaxy, who was wandering the beach with his metal detector in hopes of finding some washed up pirate treasure. Professor Galaxy rushed over to check on the pelican. Are you okay, little guy? asked Professor Galaxy. Imagine his surprise when the pelican responded with a thick Spanish accent. See, I am okay, but where am I? A talking pelican? Professor Galaxy was so excited, he asked the pelican his name and learned that it was Paco. Professor Galaxy felt he had no choice but to take Paco home with him. He soon discovered that Paco was a little naughty and gets himself into trouble from time to time. Paco needed to earn his keep while he lived with the professor. So he was given a job cleaning the lab. He seemed to be the model employee, but no one realized that Paco couldn't resist the color red. He had to touch anything that was red. And the bigger and redder it was, the more he wanted to touch it. Big red buttons were pretty much impossible for him to ignore. Early one Sunday morning, a suspicious explosion destroyed the $50 million research facility that contained Professor Galaxy's lab. Fortunately, because it was Sunday, no one was there. The damage was done. Paco had been seen heading towards the building to finish up some cleaning. Some incriminating video footage was found after the explosion. The noise from the blast woke Professor Galaxy, and he headed straight to his lab in the smoking level. All he found was a handful of feathers where the Star Lake 1999 had been stored under lock and key. Apparently, the big red button was too big and too red for Paco to resist. When Professor Galaxy got home, he found Paco sitting on the front steps looking a little singed. Unfortunately, it was the professor who was blamed for the explosion. He lost his job and no one would hire him. So he retired to his waterfront cottage and began to work in his own secret lab under his house. The lab came complete with its own submarine for underwater research. Professor Galaxy continued his teleportation research in hopes of being featured in Scientific Digest, Celebrity Edition. Scientists everywhere will love and admire me, he thought to himself. Without a job to go to every day, Paco began to teach local children how to speak Spanish. Scuba Jack heard about the talking pelican and had to check it out for himself. After finding Paco and speaking with him, Scuba Jack ran into the Professor Galaxy, who was coming to bring Paco a fish sandwich for lunch. The three became the best of friends. Scuba Jack was fascinated by the Starlink, but it often didn't work right, so he was quite frequently the victim of random teleportation. The poor guy was sent not just to one place to another, but from one time to another. One day he was sent to prehistoric times and nearly eaten by a T-Rex. The very next day, Scuba Jack found himself on the moon. Scuba Jack, Professor Galaxy, and Paco were like fish sticks and tartar sauce, always together. Even though he loved his friends very much, Paco couldn't control his naughtiness all the time. That big red button on the Starlink was just too tempting for him to resist. Whenever Paco pushes the button, another awesome adventure begins.